My name is Nathan Judd. I'm a graduate student at the University of Maryland, working on my PhD. I got my undergraduate degree in environmental and plant biology at Ohio University in Athens. And I'm working on a project focusing on the early evolution of flowering plants. When I decided that I wanted to pursue a career in paleoecology, I knew there was only a few people who that I'd consider working with, and two of those people were at the Smithsonian. And when I found out that the Smithsonian and the University of Maryland have a relationship that allows you to study in both places, and that some fact, uh, some curators at the museum are adjunct at Maryland, I knew that it would be an ideal location for me to, uh, to learn from as many people as possible. Because at some point, so many people come through the Smithsonian or through the DC area, it just gives me an opportunity to, to network as much as possible. My research focuses on uh, early flowering plants in, North, in Western North America. I spend the summers out in Wyoming where I'm digging fossils. Uh, and we basically dig a big hole with some shovels and hand tools and picks. We wrap those, those fossils up. These are leaf impressions and we ship them back to the museum and I come back and I try to identify how many I have. And once I know how many species I have, then I can start to do the kinds of analyses that is more typical in the field of ecology. So I want to know what the distribution of abundance is, and what kinds of plants have uh, what morphologies, and where are different plants growing on the Cretaceous landscape. Because flowering plants are the most diverse and the most abundant and the uh, plant group of all the major kinds. You can think of ferns, conifers, things like that. Um, but they came from somewhere, and they only show up in the fossil record maybe in the last in the last quarter in terms of the history of flowering, or excuse me, excuse me, the history of land plants. They're sort of Johnny come lately. And now they dominate in every possible way. So I was wondering, how did that get started? And uh, is there anything we can learn about that process, which is relatively recent, that we can apply to other evolutionary questions throughout the fossil record? So I started out in uh, collecting fossils in the early, from the early Cretaceous out actually in Vancouver Island. Uh, and that was really exciting, and that's uh, another um, sort of another story about how I became interested in, in Cretaceous plant ecology and, and plant evolution. Um, but for my thesis, and for this um, this study of the distribution of flowering plants and how they affected uh, diversity, I focused on the cloverleaf formation in Wyoming because uh, the there's virtually no literature out there on uh, plant fossils from the cloverleaf. It's very famous for its dinosaurs. But if you look at, say, a painting reconstruction of dinosaurs living 110 million years ago in the Cloverly, it's a bunch of dinosaurs on a dirt landscape. But in fact, it was a lush landscape, and there's a lot we can learn both about the plants and their evolution, but also about the community that supported the dinosaur fauna that people are so fascinated by. Uh, the other aspect of Wyoming is I'm working actually in the Bighorn Basin, which is north central Wyoming, and this is a, a unique place for paleontology. It's got a rich history of all kinds of important fossils, a lot of opportunities for collaboration. I get to share my camp with a variety of other researchers from other institutions every summer. And um, and we all, paleontologists have a long-standing relationship with the Bureau of Land Management in Wyoming, which makes permitting and collecting fossils for science uh, uh, fairly easy. So the research that I'm doing uh, here for the, for the Peter Buck Fellowship is uh, central to my thesis work at the University of Maryland. So as I uh, work towards my thesis, I'm also completing what I said I would do for this fellowship. And um, as I write each chapter of my thesis, I'm trying to think of each of those chapters as a publishable unit. So I'm writing um, three or four papers that together will constitute a thesis, and each of those will relate to that bigger question, how do flowering plants change plant community structure? So I chose the Smithsonian because of its extensive collections, which I can use to compare with, uh, with the fossils that I collect, and I can use to, um, to sort of mine the collections for additional questions that I might pursue later in my career or as part of this project. And then also especially uh, um, the ability to network at the museum was, is really exciting. There's so many people that come through at any given time that as long as I have, as long as I'm down here, uh, in my office, just a few feet away from the collections, I'll get to meet people from, from all over the world that come through just to see what we've got.